The Donbass region in eastern Ukraine was home to a pre-war population of around 4 million people and major cities such as Donetsk, Luhansk and Mariupol now in Vladimir Putin's crosshairs. This businessman ran a local pizzeria. He's now fighting with Ukraine's volunteer defense force. In Donbass, we are a free people, he says. But Russia is trying to finish what it started in 2014. Indeed, parts of the Donbass have been at war for eight years. After Russia annexed Crimea, pro-Russian separatists tried to take the Donbass. But around two-thirds of the eastern regions remained under Ukrainian control, producing a simmering stalemate. Just days before his invasion, Putin signed decrees recognizing the separatist republics of Donetsk and Luhansk and promising to rescue their Russian-speaking populations from what he called a genocide. Asked whether Putin is rescuing them, this Russian-speaking resident scoffs. Putin should retire, he says. He should rescue his own people. We are Ukrainian. Prior to the war, he worked in a steel factory, like many in the Donbass. It's very much uh, kind of a rust belt of Ukraine. It's in a, an economically very, um, very important um, key region. The region fell on hard times in the 1990s, but remained strategically important. If Russian forces captured the Donbass and Kherson, Putin could control a land bridge across Ukraine's south coast. And after the botched invasions of Kyiv and other areas, the Donbass would also give the Russian president a much-needed victory. This is uh, a huge importance for Russia uh, not to show, not to look as losers, uh, and also to keep um, Ukraine under constant pressure and control. May the 9th marks Victory Day in Russia, commemorating the Soviet defeat of Nazi Germany. The Kremlin reportedly wants to declare some kind of victory in Ukraine by that date. But many military experts believe a Russian victory in the Donbass will take much longer. And there may be no Victory Day for Russia at all. Jeff Semple, Global News, Toronto.